everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about motivation and productivity and many different pieces of our lives that play into it. But specifically, I'm going to be talking about motivation and productivity in the brain of a kid with ADHD. By the time I'm done giving my talk, I will have completely revamped the way that each and every one of you thinks about motivation, ADHD, and other so-called mental disabilities. Not to mention the way you think of yourself. So to start off, who am I? I am a master procrastinator and the champion of sitting for hours staring at my work, wishing it would just do itself. <laughs> I can get an assignment at the beginning of the year and never turn it in without batting an eye. <laughs> I am the queen of saying, this has nothing to do with what I want to do in my life. Why do I have to learn about history in Spanish? Oh, let's say, I'm never going to use that. I am very skilled at not doing my homework, not studying, and getting straight A's on every single test I take. Yeah, you heard me right. And on top of that, I have ADHD, and anxiety, and I'm a perfectionist, and yeah, no, that's all I'm just going to study. But that's still, it's a heavy load I'm looking around. 10 to 1, at least half of you are thinking, no crap, Sherlock. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> but back to the topic. I drive this down the rabbit hole, which I may add is a technique that so many of us use to get out of doing work. It's one of the biggest culprits for crime productivity. And crap, some people use it have ADHD, just like me. Why? Because people with ADHD get their motivation from what they want to do in the moment, not from what they know would help their future. Kids with ADHD are extremely likely to sacrifice what they want most in the future for what they want most in the moment. Adults do it too. You know what I'm talking about. When you really want to lose weight or get in shape, but then you really just want that ice cream. <laughs> or you're just so tired that you cannot get your butt out of bed at 5 in the morning. <laughs> Work out. Yeah, I thought so. We are all guilty of procrastination and diving down the rabbit hole. But if you have ADHD, it's a whole lot harder to dig yourself out. With ADHD, our brains jump from one thing to another in rapid succession. We get bored very easily. And once we get bored, we tend to give up. I can force myself to write an essay about the topic that I really couldn't care less about. But it's pretty obvious my heart wasn't in it. Instead of looking like a polished, advanced paper for 16-year-olds, it sounds like a sixth grader wrote it. That's what I think. But, yeah, other kids with ADHD, they can force themselves to do it too. Never ends up well, though. It never turns out to look so great. My family's psychiatrist, Dr. Daniel S. Pine, has taught us a lot about struggles that come with ADHD. People all over the world with ADHD, not just kids. We struggle to get started, to focus, to continue working, to finish working, to motivate ourselves, to be productive, etc. We are constantly shooting ourselves in the foot. And still, the world has yet to try and fix it. Yeah, there are loads of ADHD medications. Those are expensive. They have some pretty nasty side effects. And they don't always work. In order to motivate ourselves and increase our productivity, first, we have to get to the root of the problem. In my mind, one of the biggest culprits is the stigma surrounding ADHD. When people hear the word ADHD, they typically envision a boy, unable to sit still, focus, or regulate his behavior. Most people don't think of a girl who gets straight A's, throws herself into schoolwork, and loves to learn. A lot of individuals, including those who have ADHD, think it's a disorder. Heck, disorder is part of its name. <laughs> ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Personally, I find that to be pretty funny. I mean, what even is a disorder? The medical definition of disorder is a disruption of normal physical or mental functions a disease or abnormal condition. 
which is another way to say that something in your body isn't normal. But the ironic thing is, there is no such thing as normal. There never has been, and there never will be, another living organism exactly like you. Not even identical twins are truly the same. There will always be a difference in the neural pathways of our brains created through the unique experiences that we each have. There is no such thing as normal because we are all different. So the concept of a disorder is based off of a false idea. But society has cemented this idea into so many of us that as a disorder, people with ADHD are screwed up and they're never going to get anywhere. This fact has strengthened our external locus of control. The part of your brain that tells you, well, this is just how I am, this is just how it is, I, I can't do anything about it, so why should I bother to try? This attitude completely destroys one's motivation and in turn, their productivity. If we can eradicate this false idea from society, we will have made immense progress in promoting healthy brain function for people all over the world. However, there is another definition of disorder, a definition that, in my mind, is a perfect summarization. My definition of disorder is a condition that is incapacitating in some form to the individual in the environment that they're in. ADHD is a disorder because it can have extremely negative effects on a person's education and the development of vital life skills, if only because they struggle with finding motivation. Quite often, people struggle when they don't see the point. If you are interested in history or learning another language and you want to be a biologist, chances are you're going to think those classes are pretty useless. And I had that mindset for a good two years. Didn't get me anywhere. And yeah, at first glance, those classes really are pointless for you. But while the material you're being taught isn't the most vital for your future, the skills that you are learning most definitely are. Taking notes from a history textbook gives you the skills to take brief yet thorough notes and to identify what information is important and what's extra. Two skills that are very useful to have in college grad school, and employment in general. Learning a foreign language gives you the skills to learn new vocabulary and to determine their meaning, the meaning of the words from the roots. A skill that's very handy to have when you're in an occupation that uses a crap ton of big, long, confusing words. Like you know, ultra microscopic syllable in the That's a type of pneumonia, same cure. But very rare. Say that to for a student who wants to be a biologist, the actual material for those classes isn't super important. But the skill sets that you're learning every day most definitely are. Once you're able to see that and recognize it, you'll find it gets a lot easier to find the motivation to do your work. But sometimes, the only factor holding someone back is their teacher. When a teacher truly loves their job, is incredibly passionate about their subject and enriching their students' brains, it's pretty damn easy to do your work. Excitement, enthusiasm, and passion are all extraordinarily contagious. But so are boredom, dread, and just plain you know, not caring. When teachers have almost no energy, when they speak in monotone, when they just regurgitate the information and it's all monkey see, monkey do. Whenever anything like that happens, whenever anything like that happens, it shows their students that the class doesn't matter and that they shouldn't bother to pay attention. So they don't. Unfortunately, this happens a lot. Especially in schools with a lot of students and not that many teachers. Take public school, for example. So how can we maneuver through this seemingly impossible obstacle course? I know I have found quite a few ways to be consistent. In my experience, one of the most important tools for motivation is the work environment. Many kids are a lot more productive in school than they are at home. Why? Because of the habits they form. From the day you're born, home becomes your safe space. 
And so you eat, sleep, play. It's a place where you don't do any work. School, on the other hand, is a structured environment where all you do is work. All work and no play. Except for recess, but it doesn't matter. That's why a lot of people struggle to do their work when they get home. Not just students, adults too. Even if they love the school and their teachers or their job, and everybody raves about them, it's pretty common for people just want to sit down and plop when they get home. I like to do that. I know it sucks to hear this, but the only way you can make sure that you're really productive is to work in a productive environment. For some people, this means staying after school to do their homework. For others, it means work in a library or in the park. You really want to work at home, make sure you have a room, one room, where there are no couches, comfy chairs, televisions, or any other sort of distraction. Create a designated work-only space, and make sure your phone is plugged in, in airplane mode, and in a completely different room. <laughs> And give yourself a break. It's not healthy to work for hours on end. So once you start to feel unproductive, like you're getting bored, get some exercise. Get outside. Get a run. Get your blood flowing. Just stay away from any technology until you're 100% done with all your work. Trust me. Instagram isn't going anywhere. <laughs> get yourself a study buddy too. Whether it's a friend, a teacher, a babysitter, Having someone to hold you accountable is a huge help. It's an extra bonus if you're both working, because then you keep each other in check and focus. Try to strip their family study buddies down. While it may work for some, most people tend to get irritated when an immediate family member is keeping them in line. I get offended, so sorry about that. <laughs> in the end, though, the only person that can make you more motivated and productive is yourself. All these tools I just gave you, none of it's going to work unless you tailor it to your unique needs. You have to want it for you, not because other people want you to do it. Trust me, you cannot unlock your true potential until you take a stand and fight for your future self. Thank you.